on the morning of Christ's nativity, 1629. This the month, and this the happy morn, wherein the Son of Heaven's eternal King, a wedded maid and virgin mother born, our great redemption from above did bring. For so the holy sages once did sing, that he our deadly forfeit should release, and with his Father work you perpetual peace, that glorious form, that light unsufferable, and that far-beaming blaze of majesty, wherewith he wanted heaven's high council table, to sit the midst of trinal unity, he laid aside, and, here with us to be, forsook the course of everlasting day, and chose with you darksome house of mortal clay, say, heavenly muse, shall not thy sacred vein, affer, present to the infant God, hast thou no verse, no hymn, or solemn string, to welcome him to this his new abode, now well the heaven, by the sun's team untrod, hath took no print of the approaching light, and all the spangled host keep watch in squadrons bright, see how from far upon the eastern road, the star-led wizards haste with odors sweet, oh, run, prevent them with thy humble ode, and lay it lowly at his blessed feet, have thou the honor first thy lord to greet, and join thy voice unto the angel choir, from out his secret altar touched with hallowed fire, the hymn, it was the winter wild, will the heaven-born child, all meanly wrapped in the rude manger lies, nature, in awe to him, had doffed her gaudy trim, with her great mass stays so to sympathize, it was no season then for her, to wanton with the sun, her lusty pear mare, only with speeches fair, she woos the gentle air, to hide her guilty front with innocent snow, and on her naked shame, pollute with sinful blame, the saintly veil of maiden white to throw, confounded, that her maker's eyes, should look so near upon her foul deformities, but he, her fears to cease, send down the meek-eyed peace, she, crowned with olive green, came softly sliding, down through the turning sphere, his ready harbinger, with turtle wing the amorous clouds dividing, and, waving whiter merit wand, she strike, universal peace through sea and land, no war or bat tails sound, was heard the world around, the idle spear and shield were high up hung, the hooked chariots stood, unstained with hostile blood, the trumpet spake not to the armed throng, and kings sat still with awful eye, as if they surely knew their sovereign lord was by, but peaceful was the night, wherein the prince of light, his reign of peace upon the earth began, the winds, with wonder whist, smoothly the waters kissed, whispering new joys to the mild ocean, he now hath quite forgot to rave, while birds of calm sit brooding on the charmed wave, the stars, with deep amaze, stand fixed in steadfast gaze, bending one way their precious influence, and will not take their flight, for all the morning light, or Lucifer that often warned them thence, but in their glimmering orbs did glow, until their lord himself best speak, and bid them go, and, though the shady gloom, had given day her room, the sun himself withheld his wonted speed, and hid his head for shame, as his inferior flame, the new enlightened world no more should need, he saw, greater sun appear, than his bright throne or burning axle tree could bear, the shepherds on the lawn, or ere the point of dawn, sat simply chatting I rustic row, full little thought they then, that the mighty pan, was kindly come to live with them below, perhaps their loves, or else their sheep, was all that did their silly thoughts so busy keep, when such music sweet, their hearts and ears did greet, as never was by mortal finger struck, divinely warbled voice, answering the stringed noise, as all their souls in blissful rapture took, the air, such pleasure loth to lose, with thousand echoes still prolongs each heavenly close, nature, that heard such sound, beneath the hollow round, of Cynthia's seat the airy region thrilling, now was almost one, to think her part was done, and that a rain had here its last fulfilling, she knew such harmony alone, could hold all heaven and earth in happier union, at last surrounds their sight, a globe of circular light, that with long beams the shamefaced night arrayed, the helmed cherubim, and sworded seraphim, are seen in glittering ranks with wings displayed, harping in loud and solemn choir, with unexpressive notes, to heaven's newborn air, such music, as tis said, before was never made, but when of all the sons of morning sung, will the creator great, his constellations set, and the well-balanced world on hinges hung, and cast the dark foundations deep, and bid the weltering waves their oozy channel keep, ring out, ye crystal spheres, once bless our human ears, if ye have power to touch our senses so, and let your silver chime, move in melodious time, and let the bass of heaven's deep organ blow, and with your ninefold harmony, make up full consort to the angelic symphony, for, if such holy song, enwrap our fancy long, time will run back and fetch the age of gold, and speckled vanity, will sicken soon and die, and leprous sin will mull from earthly mold, and hell itself will pass away, and leave her dolorous mansions to the peering day, yes, truth and justice then, will down return to men, the enameled airs of the rainbow wearing, and mercy set between, throned in celestial sheen, with radiant feet the tissued clouds down steering, 
and heaven, as at some festival, will open wide the gates of her high palace hall. But wise as fate says no, this must not yet be so. The babe lies yet in smiling infancy, that on the bitter cross, must redeem our loss. So both himself and us to glorify, yet first, to those it chained in sleep, the wakeful trump of doom must thunder through the deep, with suck, horrid clang, as on Mount Sinai rang, will the red fire and smoldering clouds outbreak, the aged earth, aghast, with terror that blast, shall from the surface to the center shake, when, at the world's last session, the dreadful judge in middle air shall spread his throne, and then at last our bliss, full and perfect is, but now begins, for from this happy day, the old dragon underground, in straighter limits bound, not half so far cast his usurped sway, and, wroth to see his kingdom fail, swinges the scaly horror of his folded tail, the oracles are dumb, no voice or hideous hum, runs through the arched roof in words deceiving, Apollo from his shrine, can no more divine, but hollow shriek the steep of Delphos leaving, no nightly trance, or breathed spell, inspires the pale-eyed priest from the prophetic cell, the lonely mountain soar, and the resounding shore, a voice of weeping heard in loud lament, from haunted spring and dale, edge with poplar pale, the parting geniuses with sighing scent, with flower in woven tresses torn, the nymphs in twilight shade of tangled thickets mourn, in consecrated earth, and on the holy heart, the lars and lemures moan with midnight plaint, in urns and altars round, a drear and dying sound, the frights the flamens at their service quaint, and the chill marble seems to sweat, while each peculiar power forgoes his wonted seat, Pier and Balaam, forsake their temples dim, with that twice battered god of Palestine, and moon dashed earth, heaven's queen and mother both, now sits not girt with taper's holy shine, the Libic Hammond shrinks his horn, in vain the Tarian maids their wounded them is mourned, and sullen knowledge, fled, hath left in shadows dread, his burning idol all of blackest hue, in vain with symbols ring, they call the grisly king, in dismal dance about the furnace blue, the British gods of Nile is fast, Isis and Horus and the dog Anubis haste, nor is Osiris seen, in Memphian grove or green, trampling the unshowered grass with lowings loud, nor can he be at rest, within his sacred chest, not the profoundest hell can be his shroud, in vain, with timbreled anthems dark, the sable stoled sorcerers bear his worshipped ark, he feels from Judah's land, the dreaded infant's hand, the rays of Bethlehem blind his dusky ain, nor all the gods beside, longer dare abide, not tiff and huge ending in snaky twang, our babe, to show his godhead true, can in his swaddling bands control the damned crew, so, when the sun in bed, curtained with cloudy red, pillows his chin upon an orient wave, the flocking shadows pale, troop to the infernal jail, each fettered ghost slips to his several grave, and the yellow skirted face, fly after the night steeds, leaving their moon-loved maze, but see, the virgin blessed, hath later babe to rest, time as our tedious song should here have ending, heaven's youngest team star, hath fixed her polished car, her sleeping lord with handmade lamp attending, and all about the courtly stable, bright harnessed angels sit in order serviceable, a paraphrase on Psalm 114, when the blessed seed of terror's faithful son, after long toil their liberty had won, and passed from Farian fields to Canaan land, led by the strength of the Almighty's hand, Jehovah's wonders were in Israel shown, his praise and glory was in Israel known, that saw the troubled sea, and shivering fled, and sought to hide his froth beckled head, Lo in the earth, Jordan's clear streams recoil, a faint host that hath received the foil, the high huge bellied mountains skip like crams, amongst their ewes, the lit hills like lambs, why fled the ocean, and why skip the mountains, why turn Jordan toward his crystal fountains, shake, earth, and at the presence be aghast, of him that ever was and I shall last, that glassy floods from rugged rocks can crush, and make soft rills from fiery flint stones gush, Psalm 136, let us wait, gladsome mind, Praise the Lord for he is kind, for his mercies I endure, ever faithful, ever sure, let us blaze his name abroad, for of God's he is the God, for his, etc. Oh let us his praises tell, that doth the wrathful tyrants quell, for his, etc. That with his miracles doth make, amaze heaven and earth to shake, for his, etc. That by his wisdom did create, the painted heavens so full of state, for his, etc. That did the solid earth ordain, to rise above the watery plain, for his, etc., that by his all-commanding might, did fill the new-made world with light, for his, etc., and cause the golden tressed sun, all the day along his course to run, for his, etc., the horn moon to shine by night, amongst her spangled sisters bright, for his, etc., he, with his thunder-clasping hand, smote the firstborn of Egypt land, for his, etc., and, in despite of Pharaoh fell, 
he brought from thence his Israel, for his, etc. The ready waves he cleft in twain, of the Erythrean main, for his, etc. The floods stood still, like walls of glass, while the Hebrew bands did pass, for his, etc. But full soon they did devour, the tawny king with all his power, for his, etc. His chosen people he did bless, in the wasteful wilderness, for his, etc. In bloody battle he brought down, kings of prowess and renown, for his, etc. He foiled bold Sion and his host, that ruled the Ignorian coast, for his, etc. And large limb dog he did subdue, with all his over hardy cur, for his, etc. And to his servant Israel, he gave their land, therein to dwell, for his, etc. He hath, wit, pity aside, beheld us in our misery, for his, etc. And freed us from the slavery, of the invading enemy, for his, etc. All living creatures he doth feed, and with full hand supplies their need, for his, etc. Let us, therefore, warble forth, his mighty majesty and worth, for his, etc. That his mansion hath on high, above the reach of mortal eye, for his mercies I endure, ever faithful, ever sure.